Okay, we're going to go ahead and tackle this math word problem in this uh, video. And uh, I wouldn't classify this as an absolute algebra word problem or any particular level, but I would say this is generally this type of uh, the difficulty of this problem would be at the, like the middle school uh, level and or certainly in algebra, pre-algebra class. So if you're taking uh, math somewhere in that uh, difficulty uh, range, then you should be able to handle this problem. But, you know, if you just want to check this out and see if you got this problem right, it's not that um, complicated, okay? Uh, basically, uh, the way I don't want to kind of tip, uh, give you too many hints, because if you want to try this problem, that's the best way to kind of, you know, see if you can figure it out on your own. So we're going to get into how to solve this particular problem. Let's just actually read it real quick. So it says, how many hours will it take uh, for a pump rated at 20 gallons per minute to empty a 15,000 gallon pool. So that means we have some sort of pump here. It's rated, means its, its capacity is that it could, uh, you know, empty out, let's say you had uh, 20 gallons of water right here. Just some, let's just make sure you understand this question. Let's say you had 20 uh, gallons of water. This pump could empty that little 20 gallon uh, can of water out in uh, one minute. Okay, so that's what that means, rated or its, its capacity. Different ways we kind of explain that. And then obviously we have a 15,000 gallon pool. So we, you know, we're going to pump this, all the water out of this pool using this particular pump. How long is it going to take to uh, get this job done? And we want to measure our, uh, the length of that job in hours. So that is the specific question. And uh, if you think you can figure it out, certainly definitely want you to go ahead and pause the video. Just quickly get a piece of paper and a pencil. You know, think of you, you know, the main thing is this. When you're trying to figure out any math problem, uh, try to justify your conclusions. That's the big thing here. So if you're turning this into a math teacher, they want to know, are you, you know, do you have math skills? Do you understand math concepts? So there's different ways you can kind of approach this. Eh, there's kind of one general skill set or set of skills that you kind of really need to uh, solve this particular problem. But, you know, your your work can look different than my work, can look different from someone else's, and it can all be good. As long as you're telling the right story of how to go from the problem to the solution, that's what counts. So I'm going to get into uh, this here in just one second. It's not that difficult of a problem, but you certainly need to be able to handle this type of problem for sure if you're at you know, at the middle school level or beyond in terms of mathematics. So we're going to get to this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching for several, several years. And uh, over that time, I've developed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You could check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. Um, very, very comprehensive math courses. I don't do a little short tutorials. I, you know, all, that's why it takes me years to build and construct a course. Um, I only try to really teach at the highest, uh, uh, in terms of the highest quality and the highest level of comprehension. Okay, so if I teach, if I'm going to be your math teacher, I'm going to really, really try to teach you everything I know and everything you need to know. Okay, to be successful. So that's why you're not going to get quick tutorial overviews. You know, you're really going to get a, a lot of information. Um, but beyond uh, uh, that, my courses would include all the main courses, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, going to be launching pre-calculus here. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for an exam like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACER, CLEP exam, teacher certification, nursing, entrance, it doesn't make a difference. I do a ton of work, cover a lot of different uh, type of exams. So I should be able to help you out. Just go to my site, check out my course catalog. If I don't have your exam, drop me a line and I'll give you some guidance on, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll help you the best I can. Also a lot, do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning system. And then I just help those of you out there as well. They're just struggling in your class. Maybe you're just taking algebra and you're struggling. Definitely help you out. Now, one thing you need to be doing that I cannot do for you is to take great math notes. Over decades of teaching math, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take great notes, okay, put the work in, put the effort in, the daily work, are going to do very, very well, okay, and the reverse is true, those students are like, I have a photographic memory, uh, I have multiple friends in this class that love taking notes, so I'm just going to copy their notes, uh, or 
you know, math is my favorite uh, period to do my homework for biology. Um, you know, listen, I get it. I was a young uh, student once. Oh, maybe I even like, maybe you're not that young. I'm just telling you right now, if you don't uh, take notes, you are really at high risk for not doing well in math. Okay. The secret to learning anything is to really be focused and engaged. And there's no better activity than note taking to keep you focused, engaged. Right? Just believe me on this one. Uh, you know, uh, this is just an absolute rule of mathematics as far as I'm concerned. So start improving in your note taking. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre algebra. Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so here is our problem. And um, obviously, I kind of laid it out for you. So how do we approach a word problem? Well, uh, basically, let me just kind of show you the quick, quick general steps, and then we'll get into the mechanics of this. So the first thing you want to do is obviously read the problem. Okay, now you're like, yeah, obviously, you're going to have to read the problem to solve the problem. But this is not what I'm talking about. You need to read the problem like multiple times, okay, for especially like more uh, abstract or complicated uh, word problems like in, in algebra, I would say at least at a minimum three times, probably more than three times. You're going to have to read, reread, make sure you understand uh, the prompt. So just don't read it once and just start to do math. Start. That's not that's not good. you got to read it, make sure you understand the question, start pulling information, and then, you know, um, this is how what I mean by reading the prompt. The second thing is, you need to make a model. All right, so this could be some sort of figure sketch. You know, do something graphically. Uh, it could be a table. It could be anything, but kind of try to create a model that represents the information that's going on in the problem. Then the next thing is you need to, uh, and this is very uh, true, in, especially in algebra word problems, is that you're going to want to identify a variable, okay, the unknown. What are you trying to solve for? So you might want to say, let's say let, x equal to this um, in algebra you'll set uh, or assign a variable so again these are general guidelines uh, they may not be appropriate to, uh, in every single word problem but these are good general uh, guidelines for any word problem all right so the next thing that you want to do is once you kind of have your unknown identified i.e what is the question asking then we, we need to set up uh, some sort of it's uh, generally an equation Okay, to solve for that unknown. Okay, we need something to help us solve for that unknown. So we're going to set up an equation. Uh, then number five, we will solve such equation. Okay, and then lastly, once we have the answer to that equation, you want to make sure that we answer. Let me write that a little bit better. That we answer the right question. Okay, uh, too often I see students do all this stuff beautifully. They'll solve their equation. They'll say x is equal to this, and then they're done, and they move on. But guess what? This is not the answer to the original question. So uh, this is a big, big mistake that happens, uh, especially when students just get so immersed. But they, you have to go through all the steps, okay, when it comes to a word problem. Now, this one is a very easy word problem. But again, once you're done doing your uh, equation solving steps, whatever the case is, make sure that that is, or you may have to take an additional step to answer the question. So how do we... Make sure we're answering the question. You're going to have to go back and reread, double, triple check. Oh, yeah, this the question was asking this. Oh, my answer, yes, that's the answer. Boom. And then that's how you do well in mathematics on these type of problems. So these are the uh, general guidelines. Now, if you think you um, are like, okay, yeah, I got that. If you want to you know, go ahead and uh, try this problem on your own, go ahead and pause the video because I am going to solve it right now. And the topic here, or the math kind of a skill that we'll be, uh, kind of really need to understand, um, is in the area of rates, uh, ratios, and proportions. Okay, so this is kind of a word problem that you would see uh, in a chapter or a unit uh, that uh, you'd be studying rates, ratios, and proportions, which of course are taught you know, as early as uh, middle school, sixth grade, seventh grade, and ninth grade, tenth grade, doesn't make a difference college. This is typical stuff. All right, so here's the problem again. How many hours will it take for a pump rated at 20 gallons per minute to empty out a 15,000 gallon pool? So you can see I just got a little pool here, 15,000 gallons, and we want to remove the water from the pool. So here I have a little diagram of a pump. So I'm, I'm making a model. This is what I'm kind of doing here, right? So 
I'm taking the information from the problem and I'm kind of just seeing it graphically and pulling pieces out of here. But let's let's look at the pump here, okay? So the pump is rated at 20 gallons uh, per minute. So let's just uh, review this, okay? This is, when we say this, this is 20 gallons. Now this little slash here, we use the word per, okay? A minute, okay? So this is 20 gallons per minute. Very much like 60 miles per hour when you're talking about like the speed of a car or something, okay? So that little slash, we would say the word per, okay? So this pump pumps uh, any liquid out, let's say, 20 gallons per minute, okay? That's its capacity. So we can write it here, 20 gallons per minute. But the way we can um, we need to understand this, this is what we call a rate. This is the rate of the pump, which is different than a ratio. And I'm kind of going off on, I don't want to go off on too many side topics here that are relevant to rates, ratios, and proportions. I have tons of videos on my uh, channel and, or my pre-algebra or algebra playlist on rates, ratio, and proportions. But you need to understand the difference between a rate, a ratio, and a proportion. Okay, and I'll kind of highlight them a little bit in this problem. But... You really need to get into those thoroughly because this is important stuff. But here's the thing that you need to know. I can write this 20 gallons per minute. I could write it this way, 20 gallons. I could put my little fraction bar right here per one minute. Okay, so this is the same thing. 20 gallons per, okay, one minute is the same thing as 20 gallons per minute. So you need to understand this, that you can write the rate of the pump this way and this is very very important so that's kind of like the first thing and if you understand that then we can now solve this problem because the key to solving this problem is setting up a proportion okay so very quickly what is a proportion a proportion is two equal fractions okay very uh very fast review if i have the fraction one half give me another fraction that's equal to one half you said oh it's five over ten or three over six four over eight all great of fractions that are equal to one half. So that's what a proportion is. It's one fraction equal to another fraction. But the thing is, when you have proportions, is that we have this property called the cross product. If we cross multiply like one times 10, one times 10, that's gonna be equal to two times five. Okay, so 10 is equal to 10. So in proportions, the cross products are equal. All right, you need to know this. If you are rusty on rates, ratio, and proportions, then this uh, little problem will be a good, uh, give you good feedback on, um, you know, if you need to do additional review. Again, I have tons of this, um, tons of videos in my YouTube ch uh, channel, my algebra uh, playlist on my YouTube channel, but I really thoroughly teach this in my, my algebra uh, class uh, as well. All right, so when we, um, knowing that a proportion is two equal fractions, okay, uh, we can kind of take this definition a step further. It's also, uh, we could say it's two equal rates as well, or ratios, because ratios and uh, rates are, in fact, fractions. So let's go back to our 20 uh, gallons per minute information, okay? So we can write that, again, as a fraction like this, 20 gallons per one minute. That's what that means. So we want to figure out how many... Um, we're going to have to get minutes first, how many minutes it's going to take this pump to pump out 15,000 gallons, and then we'll worry about the hours part here in a second. So what we want to do is set up a proportion, and the way we set it up is we use the information in the prom, and we have to have the same units of measure um, in, uh, in the same position in terms of um, these fractions. So for example, okay, we have this fraction, I have gallons in the numerator, and I have minutes in the denominator. So over here, I'm going to say 20 gallons per one minute is equal to 15,000 gallons. Notice gallons here are in the numerator, okay, uh, per X amount of minutes, okay? So if this pump could do 20,000 gallons uh, in one minute, it can do this 15,000 gallons in so many minutes, X minutes. I don't know how many minutes. So this is my unknown value, X, okay? All right. So if this makes sense to you, and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm with it, and I'm, I got it. And so uh, at this point, uh, we're ready to kind of take the next step and solve for X, solve for an unknown um, uh, quantity here. So we're going to use that cross product that I was just uh, showing you there in a second. So it's going to be 20 times X. So that's going to be like that, 20X is basic algebra, 1 times 
uh, 15,000 is, of course, 15,000. And to solve for x, okay, this is all basic algebra solving uh, uh, skills here. I'm going to go ahead and divide the equation, but uh, both sides of the equation by 20. So 15,000 divided by 20 is 750. So again, if you're like, yeah, yeah, I solved the equation. Here, Mr. Teacher, here's my answer, 750. I would unfortunately uh, give you maybe like, I don't know, maybe 6 out of 10. If that was a 10-point question, and then you would be like very sad, and you'd be like, I don't get it. I watched that guy on YouTube. He taught me how to do this problem, and da-da-da-da. And listen, you're so close, okay? We, we can, if you just paid attention and just finished the problem, you can get a 10 out of 10 here. You're not done yet, okay? We solved the equation, but we're not done. What is 750? Okay, well, X is equal to 750. Remember, X was the amount of minutes it's going to take to pump out this 15,000 gallons. So that's 750 minutes. But the question is saying what? The question is how many hours? So we have to convert minutes to hours. Okay. So this is what we're talking about. So how do we uh, convert minutes to hours? If you have 120 minutes, hopefully most of you out there be like, oh yeah, just divide that by 60 because there's 60 minutes in one hour. And that's exactly what you do. So we'll take our minutes, 750 minutes, divide by 60, and you'll get 12.5 hours. But if you wanted to kind of be uh, more precise in terms of you know, using a conversion factor, you'd be like, we have 750 minutes. If I want to convert to hours, we have one hour per uh, every 60 minutes. So these units cross cancel. So I end up with the fraction 750 times 1, which is going to be 750 over 60. And my units of measure is hours. So I do a lot of videos on units of measure, stuff you need to conversion, conversion factors. You got to know this stuff. But this is the answer, 12.5 hours. Now, if you got that answer right and you've, uh, your justification was very good and your like, teacher could follow along with what you're doing, definitely give yourself a happy face with a crazy haircut. Do whatever, any kind of, you know, you want a purple hair there, let's kind of fix this up. Put some blue here. In the 1980s, we were pretty cool. We had different kind of hair colors and all that kind of stuff like that. So something like along like that line, definitely give yourself an A+, plus, a 100%, and we'll give you a couple... Uh, two, three stars for good order. So very good, okay? I mean, it shows that you understand how to use uh, rates, ratios, and proportions. But I bet most of you out there are like, yeah, you know, I think I need to brush up more on rates, ratios, and proportions. And that's smart because those are that, you know, uh, topic is everywhere in mathematics and especially on uh, tests, all types of tests, uh, standardized tests. I mean, it's just very, very kind of... Uh, common uh, math topic that's tested uh, frequently. you got to understand rates, ratios, and proportions. So take it a step further. You know, watching this video, understanding, that's great. But if you don't practice and challenge yourself with more problems, then you're not really following through. So that you make sure you you follow through. Again, I have a lot of uh, resources on my channel. But let's just go ahead and wrap it up with this particular video. If you like this video in some way, if it helped you out, please consider smashing that like button. And uh, again, if you're not a, uh, a subscriber to my channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. Have tons of videos uh, on my channel, all there for you, basic to advance. My goal is to really uh, make math clear and understandable to really you know, get you to where you want to go. All right, The whole idea is to help you out. I know this stuff. I'm trying to get you to know this stuff so you can, you know, uh, pass your test, get through your class, whatever the case is. There's a, uh, various different motivations for people who want to, you know, are taking math. Some people hate it, but they need to, to, to get through a particular exam. I get it. And I'm not trying to convert you to, you know, love math, all right? But you don't, if you hate math, then eh, you're going to have a tough time. Definitely want to get you past hating math. You know, just, I think the more you are capable in a topic, the less, you know, the, the more you will like it, okay? That's kind of really uh, the bottom line. All right, but remember, if you really wanted my best math help, uh, definitely uh, check out my math help program. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.